listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jeb's a millionaire. The kin folks said, Jeb, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. You look at that. You done inherited yourself a mess of castle, Paul. <laughs> it's gonna take a mess of mopping to keep it clean, Jed. <laughs> Must be ten acres of floors to scrub. You are the royal granny. You can command Oath to do that work. Okay, you're it. I'm a knight. I got to gird my loins and go to rescuing dams. Hey, <laughs> Tim. Tell it, mate. You are young. I reckon we all got to pitch in on the chores. Granny's going to be busy doctoring Cousin Marcus. But, sire, that castle's likely swarming with Saxon dogs. Oh? Yeah, that's what us ruling class calls servants. <laughs> Jenkins, the gatekeeper has just run through to say that our American family is approaching. I want the entire staff to line up in the courtyard at once. Yes, sir. I'll summon them immediately. Oh, and Jenkins, alert them that American millionaires are apt to be a bit eccentric, so we must indulge them. Yes, Mr. Fabish. Remind the staff that we are doing this for Queen, for country, and for six months back wages. Certainly, Mr. Fabish. <laughs> Granny? It'll look much better after we've whitewashed it. Whitewashed <laughs> it? Yes, sir. Uh, you help Mr. Bradshaw with the bags. Can't I get you two weed benders to understand? We don't got to do no more work. We got oafs and naifs and serfs for that. They do everything, Jethro? Of course. If they don't, we flog them. Flog them. I should kind of talk, boy. But royal folks is always flogging serfs. It's a sport of kings. If we get tired of flogging them, we just drag them to the dungeon and pile them up on a rack. No, I say that's enough. Hang them by the thumb, boy. Look <laughs> young. They heard you. Royal mouth has done it again. <laughs> Come on back, everybody. Jethro was only funning. I'll handle him, sire. Hold you, sacks of dogs, and I'll take a flog to you. <laughs> See how they come to heel when I roll talk? <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. How many is oaks? All oaks take one step forward. How about serfs? Any serfs in the crowd? Knaves? Churls? Louts? Is anybody here a swineherd? <laughs> Trouble, boy? Yeah, they won't talk. <laughs> they snickering a good bit. I think I better send for the raw floggers. <laughs> I think. Pardon, sir. How long since this dog's been flogged? They've never been flogged. See, I told you. Spare the flog and spool the oak. <laughs> I take it you are Mr. Clampett. Yes, sir. Jed Clampett. Uh, this here is Jethro, and uh, women folks here is Granny and Ellie May. Hey, Ellie? Granny? Come on over and meet the royal floggers. <laughs> yes, uh, I am Major Domo. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Domo. Or would you rather I call you Major? No, sir, you don't quite understand. Domo is short for domicile. Oh, Granny, Ellie Mae, shake hands with Mr. Domicile. Favisham. Favisham to you two. Same here, Mr. Domicile. He shortened it to Domo. I reckon we ought to call him Major. Major will do nicely. <laughs> All right, well, I got to get busy and go tonight. Come on, Ellie, you can help me with my arm. 
Oh, uh, say, Major, is there any limit on dragons? <laughs> you are at liberty to slay as many as you can find. Uh, dog, we's gonna have dragon jowls tonight. <laughs> Quite a jokester. When it comes to eating, Jethro, don't you? <laughs> you, uh, you haven't met the staff, have you? Aversham, everybody. Aversham. <laughs> Nice looking folks. Slipped my mind too. I'll fetch your bag. How is Cousin Marcus? Are you by any chance referring to the late Marcus? Yeah, but I think you folks ought to stop calling him that. He can't help it if he's late. Poor man, laying up there sick and no doctor. <laughs> but I'll cure him. Afraid you're too late. What you mean? He was taken by General Peritonitis last month. Oh. Well, I'll tell Jed. Then it's all right if I leave for London, sir. Sure, sure. I'm glad to hear Mr. Drysdale coming in. Here's your bag. Jed, I'm too late to help your cousin Marcus. What you mean? They brought in an army doctor, General Peritonitis. I'm a friend of the Major. Well, I'm going to look in on them anyway. I don't trust them army doctors. They're too fast with the saw. <laughs> Teddy, I know you miss the old master, but if Mr. Faversham finds you on this bed, he'll be in a snit. One well, of the new owners here. Hello! Anybody up here? Oh, dear. Be very quiet. Howdy, miss. I'm looking for the Marcus's room. This is the room of the late Marquis, ma'am. Oh, I do wish you folks would stop bad-mouthing him. <laughs> <laughs> that army sawbones around. I don't understand, Mom. Well, uh, never mind. <laughs> you, you run along. I just want to take a look. But, Mom, I should warn you, the old dog. Now, is... now, now, mm -hmm. I can take care of him. <laughs> I've done run into two of your biggest sexy genarians. <laughs> you scat me, watch me. <laughs> well, the old rascal can't be too sick if he's got her skittish. <laughs> Marcus, I'm Jed's kin from across the water. I've come to help doctor you. How does that set with you? <sighs> now, 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 none of that. You've got to think of me as a doctor, not as a beautiful woman. <laughs> All right. I ain't gonna open the drapes. It'll just give you high blood. <laughs> from your breathing, I'd best check your pulse. Now, give me your hand. But don't get grabby now. <laughs> well, at least they're keeping you warm. Feels like a fur nightshirt. But your arms are kind of thin. <laughs> and them nails needs trimming something off. Let's see if you got a fever. You've let your hair grow down over your eyes. <laughs> Heaven knows how long since you've had a shave. I never did see the lights. Treating sick folks like this. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> Marcus, you're at death's door. <laughs> How do I look, Ellie? Well, if you were smoking, you'd look like a pot and stuff. <laughs> you go to Sasson all night. This here armor makes me invincible. What you mean? It means you can't hurt me. Hey, go ahead and hit me, I'll show you. Your sense of filler's ears to ring. I'm gonna get you for that. Did I hear the dinner going? Heck no. Ellie done hit me in the head with an axe. You should have waited till the boy had his iron hat on. Well, he did have it on. Said it made him invincible. 
Man, I sure hope they got some dragon dogs around this castle. The way my ears is ringing, I'll never hear that rascal come. Oh, can I go dragon hunting with Jethro? Yeah, yeah, let her come. I use her for bait. <laughs> you won't? I will, too. Well, I will, too. No, no, I got other plans for Ellie. According to Mr. Drysdale, there is English gentleman coming to call. That ain't the way it's done around the castle. Well, she got to be a damsel in distress before they come. What do you mean? She gets up on the tower in her damsel dress and commences bed her. Help, save me. <laughs> then all the knights that's out questioned comes galloping up to rescue her. Well, she picks the one she likes, and they get trothed and live happy ever after. Once the dumb old damsel clouts them in the head with an axe. <laughs> Put on your damsel dress and practice bellering. Yes, sir, pal. I think I'll put an edge on this and split some kindling. We got a lot of fireplaces in this castle. Oh, please, I mean, prithee, sire, don't do that. Do you think King Arthur would split kindling? Oh, I can't see. Uh-uh, no. He'd just summon a royal kindling splitter. I don't mind doing it. But it ain't night's work. You've got to save your strength for slaying dragons, rescuing damsels in distress, and lifting a siege. What's a siege? I don't know, but they's heavy. Even Lancelot and Galahad and that bunch had trouble lifting seats. <laughs> Maybe that's what this is for. Your cousin Marcus is laying upstairs with one foot in the grave. Did you find out what he's got? Yeah, a rotten doctor. I better take off her or he'll die of neglect. Well, now, Granny, I spoke to the Major about you doctoring, and he said, forget it. They got something here called uh, socialized medicine. Yeah. Cousin Marcus needs medicine, and the doctor's out socializing. <laughs> hey, the king's alive! Hey, 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 hey. Well, what's he doing in that tin suit scaring folks? There's no two ways about it. I got to get me a dragon dog. I can't hear nothing. Granny, I'd best get this invincible night off dragon hunting before you women kill him. But, Jeff, what about Cousin Marcus? He's got to be saved. If you want to save him, keep him away from her. You're the next to kid, Jeff. Tell me I can take the case before it's too late. All right, Granny. If you run across any other night, be sure and tell them about your cousin Ellie. Okay, sir. <laughs> Look out, dragon. Here I come. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, Jethro. You got your pole sideways. You ain't going to clear the side of that. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> I told you I needed a dog. I didn't even see that dragon. I'm part near there, Marcus. Don't give up. No case is too hopeless for me. Many's the time I've snatched folks back from the valley of the shadow, and I'm going to do the same for you. No. Dad, the dog is done at your cousin. Come <laughs> here, buddy snatcher. Now, surely you're not going to wear that. Oh, no, of course not. Oh, good. My colleagues are waiting to discuss the estate. Oh, here you are, Bradshaw. And walk slowly. <laughs> oh, no, please, sir. This is the most conservative neighborhood. And the law courts are close at hand. Oh, excellent. Let's go talk to the judge about my bank reform plan. Mr. Drysdale, England is not going to bring back debtors' prison. <laughs> what about the rat for? Bad check artist. Flogging for overdrawn accounts. <laughs> not a chance. You know, I may change my mind about opening a bank here. You people destroy a man's incentive. Mr. Giles Evans, sir. Yes, what is it? It's Mr. Babisham calling from the castle. He said it's most urgent. 
Right. Bring in Mr. Drysdale. What's wrong with the castle? Well, I know this sounds incredible, sir, but I got the impression they were being attacked by dragons. Dragons? Well, I thought I heard Mr. Faversham say that they had unhorsed Jethro, but it was difficult to tell because there was a young lady calling, help save me, and another lady screaming murder. Quick, to the castle! <laughs> How's it going up there, Ellie? And I ain't going worse, Chuck, Paul. <laughs> Seen any knights headed this way? No, sir, Paul. There ain't a knight in sight. I'm getting awfully tired of just... Wait a minute, I see one. And he's riding through the woods, licking his split. Commence bellering, Ellie. Help! Save me! I'm a damsel in distress. Who <laughs> dragon? Who dragon? Who dragon? Come on out, you dragon! <laughs> Too late, Paul. He just run smack into a low limb and got squished off his horse. Forget him, Ellie. That's Jethro. <laughs> Come on now, don't laugh. I ain't never been dragon hunting before. How <laughs> was I to know them sneaky rascals sits up in trees laying for you? From now on, we stick into the roads and pastures. <laughs> Is he all right, Ellie? Yeah, Paul. He's getting back on his horse. <laughs> well, rest your voice a spell and then go to bellering again. Dad! Dad! Dad, I've been looking all over the castle for you. Did, did you see a great big shaggy dog pass by here? What, is he one of them dragon dogs? Yeah, he's dragging what's left of Marcus. <laughs> what? Jed, I want to break this to you gently. That dog has et your cousin. <laughs> it's true. Grant, there wasn't much left of him. But it's a terrible way to go. I just can't swallow this story. The dog didn't have no trouble swallowing Marcus. <laughs> and we gotta find him. Ah, yonder he is. <laughs> well, don't just stand there grinning, Jed. He's gnawing on your cousin. Granny, that dog has just got hold of a big old ham bone or something. That's Marcus. <laughs> I beg your pardon, son. We'll prove it by Mr. Domo. Faversham, that. Never mind the greetings. What's that dog gnawing on? I believe it's a leg bone of the old boar, man. Old oh, boar? That ain't no way to speak of the dead. It's becoming quite a nuisance, rooting about amongst the garbage. Garbage? <laughs> no wonder the poor old fellow was sick. Ain't you even gonna bury his bones? Dare say the dog will do that. I ain't gonna listen to no such talk. <laughs> Give me my kin, folk, you four-legged buzzard! <laughs> oh, my granny, she gets wrought up real easy. Yes. Oh, I thought I ought to tell you, sir. Mr. Drysdale is on his way to the castle. Oh, good, good. He can take medals with us. I hope Jethro fetches home a nice, plump dragon. <laughs> Come on, dragon. Come on, boy. <laughs> Look out, you crazy horse. I said stick to the road. <laughs> What's the idea of slowing down? I'm in a hurry. Sorry, sir. There's a knight on the road ahead of us. What kind of a country is this? You won't bring back a wonderful institution like Dennis Prison, and you'll let some loony Lancelot ride around. Pass. <laughs> Get off the road, you nut! Don't you call no knight no nut! <laughs> Your loony Lancelot just lanced our tire. Dead! 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 That big dog has done buried, Cousin Marcus. Oh, Granny. Come on, I'll show you. Help! Oh, me! Oh, no! Now he's after Ellie. Oh, no, Granny, that's Ellie's damsel in distress call. They coming, Paul! They coming! Nice. Coming in coveys. Oh, save me! Mr. Faversham, sir. 
I'm beginning to wonder whether it's worth the six months back wages. Please, Jenkins. Mr. Drysdale is on his way. Another American? Oh, I'm told he's quite the opposite of the Clampets. He's a businessman, sophisticated, and very, very conservative. I trust this is not Mr. Drysdale approaching. <laughs> Thanks for the ride, Sir Jethro. <laughs> Hello, I'm Melvin Drysdale. Where are the dragons? I beg your pardon. Those wild, dangerous creatures you called about. Oh, yes. One of them's up in the battlements. One just rode off. And the other two are around the bank. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord giveth and the dog taketh away. <laughs> I don't hardly think no dog could have... I don't want to talk about it, Jim. Just get me out of here. I want to go home. But, Granny, Ellie just hollered herself up a brace of night. The rest of you can stay. But this ain't no place for old folks. I don't aim to spend my last days rooting in garbage and dodging man-eating dogs. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a film waste presentation. Viacom.